It's going to be XR250 Part 3. We've got uh, the rear tail light kit just kind of hanging there. So we're going to get some things done. I'm not sure what all I'm going to get done today because it again is very hot and we've got some things to do since it is Father's Day. But uh, we're going to get as much done as we can. I did get some parts in. I actually placed an order with uh, Rocky Mountain ATV. I got those parts in. They're just small bolts, nuts, that kind of thing. Front boot covers, which I'm not doing the boot covers today because I did place another order with motosport.com and I've got tires coming. So I'm going to do the front fork boots when I do the front tire because you got to take the whole front end off. I'll show you that. But I placed an order with them and I got that. I got a new seat cover coming, some new graphics, all kinds of fun stuff. So not including the ridiculous price of the motorcycle, I've got I think another $205 combined in it with Rocky Mountain and the motorsport. Now it's probably not going to end there knowing me, it's still not going to be bad. First thing we're going to do today is actually take off these side mirrors. Now this was part of the kit I believe that the previous owner put on. They are nice to have so you can see if somebody's getting ready to smash into the back of you. but. They're kind of in the way, and this is going to be mostly used for trail riding. I will just occasionally write it down to, you know, UDF or what have you, but let's unscrew them here. And there you have it. We've got them off. I do plan on doing some sort of long ride, which I highly doubt. I'll want to put them on. What I'm going to do, because I want to clean up this wiring, is take this front headlight off. Now, it's got these two straps that aren't really that tight. I have a feeling that's why he wire tied them. Now you notice I took off the straps and we do have this big wire tie holding on. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this. If I did not have other wire ties this size, I would try to salvage this one, but luckily I have some larger ones. And of course we'll repeat the process on this side as well. And there is that wiring mess duct tape, all kinds of fun stuff. Here's a closer look. I'm not sure what the duct tape... I realize there's not a whole lot of places to hide this stuff, but you could shorten the wires if you had to. We've got all the tape off for the most part. Now fortunately, a lot of these that were taped were just so these butt connectors would not come undone. It's still a mess, so we've taken it a little bit further. We've taken off the tank, see all the dirt mud under there we're gonna clean that up but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start from the back and work my way towards the front so we're gonna get the rear tail light mounted correctly get that all wired up and then work our way back so we can find out how much of this extra wire we can get rid of and instead of using those butt connectors we're gonna solder and use heat shrink tubing but in the meantime we're gonna replace some little bits on the bike that we got and we'll show you those now. So we went ahead and replaced the side panel screws. We already got those. I am going to take it back off. We're waiting for some bushings for this. I do have the correct bolts for that and I have the correct bolt for the muffler. Even though that one works fine, I just like to keep everything as OEM as possible. So we can actually replace these brake line clips. This one appears to be fine. This one's broken off, but we're going to replace them both. And unfortunately, these videos are going to go a little bit back and forth because I don't have all the parts I need yet. But to replace these, it's just a Phillips head screw. So there is the old one. Here are the new ones. Now this one, can't get a screwdriver up here. So we're using one of these, which this happens to be made by Snap-on. I've had it for years. It's our Blue Point, which is a division of Snap-on. It's a ratcheting style, pretty cool. There you go, one thing down. Next thing we can work on is the chain guide. Now, this is the replacement. We got an OEM. They make aftermarket ones, but honestly, they're like the same price and they actually uh, hurt some fitment issues. So, see this one's just dangling there through the front. There it is. We'll have to remove this screw from the bottom. So, off camera, I went ahead and put the new guide on. Now, this one is more of a rubbery. It is the OEM product, but the old one was so old and brittle that it was actually like a plastic. The original one is kind of rubbery, so we shouldn't have any worries with that breaking anytime soon. But in the meantime, I actually started cleaning the bike. When I took this old one off, I noticed there was a lot of gunk. 
This also led me to take that skid plate off. And the reason why I had taken the skid plate off is they had foam stuffed in there and I just knew it was going to be a hot mess. Now here's the foam and the skid plate. Now the foam is used to keep larger debris out, dirt and whatnot, but the problem is, is moisture gets trapped in there. You can see the skid plate's an absolute mess. Actually, it's pretty clean now. There is some dirt still right there, but the whole thing was full, just like you see this foam. I threw probably a half a pound of dirt into the trash can. But unfortunately, with this cleaning mess, it has led me down a bit of a rabbit hole. You'll notice there's no chain on the bike. Well, I took the chain off just because it was easier access to replace that rubber chain guide. But then I noticed the chain was a little stiff and not as in great a condition as it appeared to be. And that's mainly because maybe that chain guide and also the rear guide. The rear guide's pretty chewed up on the inside. So obviously I got another one of those. We have another chain. We have another rear sprocket. We have another front sprocket. So this is already starting off bad. Not that the parts are bad or anything like that. They're actually fine. That chain can probably be lubed and it'll be fine. It did have some scuff marks on it. But unfortunately I have a little bit of OCD. So yeah. We're going to continue on this video. We're going to replace the front sprocket since we have a whole new kit. Now on to removing this front sprocket. The first thing we need to do is take off this cover. It is an 8 millimeter, which almost all bikes are the same as far as Honda, Kawasaki, Yamaha, Suzuki. They use a lot of 8 millimeter and a lot of 10 millimeter. There's one at the top and there's one down here. And when you take it all the way off, you'll notice it's two pieces. There's the main piece, which this happens to be aluminum. A lot of them are plastic, and then there is the brake. Now the first thing I like to do before removing a sprocket, especially if you're gonna use a hand tool, go ahead and put it in first gear. Now we're already in first gear, that way it cannot turn. Take those two bolts out. Now once you have those removed, you've got this little keyway here. Go ahead and spin it until it actually comes out. Once you do that, the front sprocket should Pull right off. At this point I'm really happy that I ended up buying a new chain and a front sprocket and a rear sprocket. I like to do them all in like sets. Look at the teeth on this. They're fine but you can see they've got a slight curve to them. So this is a little bit worn out. It's not going to be exactly as smooth as it should be. And while we're down here I'm going to go ahead and clean this up a little bit just using some purple power and a steel brush. Now that I have this as clean as I really want to get it, I'm going to replace this chain block right here as well. And it's a 10 millimeter, just like almost everything else. 10 and 8, that's your two main sockets for any Japanese built bike. See some deep grooves in there and some silver paint. And before we install the new chain block, we need to take this adapter off. You can see it's kind of sandwiched in between here. There's a bushing in the middle of it and you can just slam it on the ground, try to get it off any way necessary. I'm just taking a flathead and just kind of putting it in there. Here's the bushing. We should... There. It comes right off. Here's a quick look at the new one. You can tell there are no grooves. There's no silver paint. It's nice and rubbery. This one is pretty stiff. Before I can install this new chain block onto the bike, I need to reinstall the bracket. So go ahead and slide the bracket into place. And once you've got the bracket where it needs to go, install your bushing. And now we're ready to reinstall into the bike. Now you'll notice there's some ridges there. That is what actually holds it in. Also and ensures that you're not going to put it in backward. And when you're installing this, be sure to tilt it back a bit because this rides very close to the shifter. Now if it hits the shifter, it's not a big deal. It's just made out of rubber, but I like to loosen it up, push up with my finger here. And now you can see it installed. There's plenty of space between the shift shaft and the block. And now it's time to install our new front sprocket. We're going to go ahead and install it with the number facing out. Once we get it in the groove here, there's actually a groove on this shaft. To, let's say right there. And now it will come out. And then we'll go ahead and reinstall our stock bolts. Once we got them cranked down, we'll go ahead and test it. Make sure it does not come off. That amount of looseness is normal for this particular bike. 
But for today, I think that's going to wrap it up. I'm not going to reinstall the shield on there just yet because we want to put the chain on. And it's a lot easier to put the chain on without the shield on. So once we get the chain on, the new rear sprocket, all that, we will replace that piece. Now I expect this to be a short series, but be sure to check them all out. There might be some little bit of information in all of them. Maybe you didn't know before. And if you see any of the tools that I use in the video that you'd like to use for yourself, be sure to check out the links below the video description. I have Amazon links to just about everything I use. I can even throw some of the parts in there as well. And as always, thanks for watching.